So a Gantt chart is a graphic timeline that lists all the tasks in a project. It organizes the tasks in order, it shows which tasks have to be done first before others can begin. It allocates people and resources to the task, to the tasks, and it tracks progress of the tasks and it tracks the entire project. Gantt charts sort of take different forms and they have slightly different ways of appearing. You can create a Gantt chart using pen and paper, but it's easy to use software. There's software that you can get that's dedicated to it, but you can use spreadsheet software such as Google Sheets, which we're going to use. Right, so it's really important that tasks within a project are coordinated and managed to make sure that it gets finished. There's no guarantee that a project will be successful if it's managed well, but it's more likely to be delivered on time and within budget if there's a money side of it, um, if it's tracked. So tasks, um, a task is um, any activity within, within the project timeline that needs to be completed within a defined period of time. It's an essential component of the project and it typically requires management of resources such as people, software and hardware. Now task dependencies. In the management of a project, the project plan is really made up of standalone tasks. Um, they rely on other tasks. So the tasks that must be completed before another task can begin are called predecessors. Any delay in the task that is a predecessor to another task can have an effect on the dependent task or the subsequent tasks. They can't begin until the initial task is finished. So milestones. A milestone represents the achievement of a significant stage in a project. The milestone itself has a zero time duration. It's just a, it's just a point in time. Here's an example of a Gantt chart done in Microsoft Excel, which is similar to Google Sheets. So we've got three tasks here, and then we've got, the, the, this is all referring to the text, whatever that's, whatever that is. And when the text is complete, we've got a milestone here. So we'll put the milestones on their own line from this point forward. Some Gantt charts, you see the milestone at the end of a task, but let's go with this more common practice of the milestone on a separate line. These arrows here, um, these are to indicate dependencies, all right? So this task and this task have to be finished before this one can start. That's why they are pointing to it. Okay, this task has to be finished before we can have our milestone. This task needs to be finished before this one can start, and so on. Duration is pretty obvious. How many days? So annotations. So they're comments or notes that are placed on the Gantt chart to explain any changes that are made. So this provides useful information to team members about problems that are occurring, so keeping everyone up to speed with where we're at. So here's an example of a Gantt chart that's been updated. Well, it's just a timeline really. It's sort of like a Gantt chart, it's a basic version. Structure was a day late. So we've got this indication here of the extra time and a note. This one completed on time, this one two days late. It's double the width of that one. So this is the extra. And what that's done is it's pushed this dependency out. So while this one should have started here, it would have started late. So you notice how this gives a knock on effect. So now this one is running late. This one's running late. The end of the project also finished two days late, all because of this one here. Now this one was one day late, but it, this one wasn't dependent on this one. This one could start before this one was finished. So it didn't have a knock-on effect. All right, so adjustments. So any changes that need to be made to the timeline as a result of events that have occurred during the progress of the project. And here's just another example of a basic Gantt chart. And also you can see here predecessor. There's a column for that. So this is A, design tickets. So the predecessor is there isn't one. For B, is there a predecessor for that? No. For C, is there a predecessor? Yes. So if I, this was filled out correctly, which it's not, the predecessor for C is in fact B. So there should be a B here. Does this have a predecessor? Yes. It's this one, it's C. So this would be C. That's the pre This is the predecessor to this. Not quite sure why the error didn't work. This is the Gantt chart, the same Gantt chart after adjustments. So as you can see, this one ran late, which then pushed this one out. They've taken that and they've moved it over one. We can color that in and move it forward to show that it's running late. And ideally there should be some annotation here as well. All right, thanks for listening.